Okay, so here was the first problem on the worksheet um, that gives you the following information. They give you the number of points scored per game um, by the Patriots for the past two seasons. Um, presumably, I don't think that includes this season. I think that's the last year and the year before. Um, and so the information you have is in this data table, number of points scored per game, which in principle is a random variable, right? For any upcoming game, we don't know how many points the Patriots will score. So we're going to think of this as being like our X, number of points that they score per game. Um, and you're also given the relative frequency. What percentage of games that the Patriots played in the last two years did they score that number of points? So, for example, in about 10% of games that they played over the past two years, the Patriots scored 20 points. So that's the nature of the information that you're given here. And the question is, what is the expected value of <coughs> In other words, if you were to lay down odds on the next Patriots game, how many points that you expect that they would score, knowing nothing else about the game and only taking this historical record into account, how would you figure out from this data what the expected number of points they score will be? The formula for expected value in the upper left-hand corner of your page um, kind of tells you the arithmetic for how to piece information together into an expected value. And what it tells you is first, according to the order of operations, First thing we end up doing is multiplying. That's this multiplication symbol in here. Multiply the value by the probability of that value, the probability that the random variable achieves that value. And in this example, we have a whole bunch of different values and their associated probabilities. So we have to do that for each pair um, that we have here in the table. So for example, I would take this 20 and this 10.34% that we have here that says that 10% of Patriots games roughly, they scored 20%. Multiply those together, um, and I would get something, what would I get here, 2.068 for something when I multiply that pair of numbers together. Um, and then I have to take all of these different possibilities into account, so I'm going to do that for each one. Will you change that into like I usually prefer to convert the decimal into a, or sorry, percent into a decimal first and then multiply. So if I have 10.34%, how would I convert that into a decimal? Oh, that's what you would convert to a decimal? Well, this is my personal preference. Um, I prefer to do that conversion before multiplying. It doesn't matter to the final answer. But. So how would I convert 10.34% to a decimal? Well, you move it two places to the left. Yeah, just move that decimal point two spots to the left because that's the same thing as dividing by 100. That's what a percent sign means, is divide by 100. So what I'll get here is 0 0.1034. And if I multiply that by 20, then I end up with 2.068. <clears throat> all right, so now we have all the point, number of points and their relative frequencies in here. We know what we need to do first, and that's multiply these across. So that's what we did with the example of 20 times 10.34%. When we multiply across, we ended up with 2.068. Um, if I do that same thing for all of these different rows, I'll get all of those different values. So again, you can check that each one of these is the result of multiplying across. Um, remembering, of course, when necessary, and it's not necessary every time here, to convert your percentages into decimals first. OK, so we've done all of the multiplication that we need to do for this problem. We did the x times the probability of equaling x. So we did all the multiplication. What comes after that? Now that we did all the multiplying, what's your last step? Um, that's where I got confused. Okay. So let's look back at the formula. Again, the upper left-hand corner of the page. The last component of that formula is this big red squiggle. What does the big red squiggle stand for? Addition. Addition, right. So what it tells us is that once we've done all of the multiplications, um, which give us all these numbers, then we're just going to take all of those numbers that we got and add them all together. And that sum that we get at the end of that process is going to be our expected value. So again, this is easier to do on a spreadsheet than it is by hand. Um, you know, doing it by hand for smaller examples is not so bad. This one has a lot of different outcomes. Um, so I'm just going to do that calculation really quick. I'm just going to add all these numbers together. So if I add all of those numbers together, I end up with this number down at the bottom that is the expected value of this random variable. 
So again, it was a two-step process. The first step involved multiplying. x multiplied by the probability that x is equal to that value. This is capital X over here. So that all happened first for each of the possible values that this random variable can take on, and so on, and so on. And then the second step in the process was that all of those products got added. And at the end of that, we end up with the expected value, in this example, slightly over 28. So let's put this number back into context. What does this number 28 mean in the context of this problem? It's the number of points that if we knew nothing else about the next Patriots game, based on their performance over the two seasons of data, which is included here, we would expect that on average they would score 28 points in their next game, give or take. Of course, there are a lot of other factors we could take into account. And if you're a football fan, you probably do. Who are they playing? Where are they playing? Who's at quarterback? Are they at home or away? What's the weather going to be like? Um, who's hurt? Um, who's not on the sidelines? Who's coaching? Blah, 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 blah. Um, and so this doesn't contain any of that information. This is just an overall average over the last two years of their points scored. Knowing nothing else, we expect that 28 points is about what they would get in their next game. 